There is a moment and a point in life when something will happen that will tell you to step up, either by someone or some experience. Just something that will open your eyes, be it for standing up for yourself and saying no, taking more responsibility for your actions, just being independent or by helping someone more. It's all about finding strength within yourself. And speaking of finding strength, I'm here to talk about one pink hippo that's done one such thing. Make way for the Murray! Now, I finally get to talk about the main members of the Cooper gang. And of course, Murray's a founding member. Though, when I was getting ready to have the mindset to do this, all I could think of is my own tearless video. Slutty plugin There. As narcissistic as that sounds, I'm reminded that Murray compared to Sly and Bentley, doesn't have the same amount of development. Bentley has great moments in the first game already. By Band of Thieves, he's actually standing alongside his brothers during operations, and even has more in the third game. And Sly just speaks for himself, being the titular character, of course. Murray, on the other hand, I think to myself, why doesn't he have as much as them? A lot of it comes from supplementary information, and a little bit of headcanon, quite frankly. So, as usual, let's do the rundown of the character. Even all the way back when they were children, Murray was still the getaway driver, driver being used here very loosely. It's been said that where he honed his 5 stars wanted driving skills is through working as a pizza delivery driver, and as well as being able to hotwire cars. That's pretty dope honestly, and makes a lot of sense. Plus one for Murray. But he was fired not too long after that. Not because he was ignoring speed limits, but because he was clumsy when he was getting the pizza to the doorstep. Okay, never mind. Besides being able to go wheel to wheel with Spinner from MHA, Murray wanted to do more. So by the first game, there's a few missions here and there where Murray will volunteer to get the key himself and Sly will sometimes watch his back. Either he's got something to prove, or he hates his life. But as we can tell, being able to get from point A to point B, no matter what, car or not, is cool and all. However, it's still not enough for Murray. I mean, look at Sly. He's able to do almost anything while on the field. He has the unstoppable power of the Cooper Clan's secret technique, jumping and pressing the circle button. Murray can't do that. So what if Sly is not able to use that ability? What then? Well... Someone's gonna have to step up and watch his back. But it can't just be a friend per se. It has to be someone that doesn't even identify as male or female, but as a threat. Thus, the Murray was born. Greetings, citizen. I hope you weren't harmed by my meteoropic entrance. No, Murray, I, I kept at a safe distance. Good, good. The Thunderflop knows neither friend nor foe, only destruction. Yeah, could you maybe channel some of that raw energy into the security gate? Of course! It is nothing before the Murray. Fun fact, in Japanese, it's Captain Murray. When people often think of dangerous wild animals, lions, tigers, bears, omais, and zoro fans are usually what come to mind. However, if anyone knows, you know that a hippopotamus is fucking dangerous. These motherfuckers have a parallel, if not a greater KDA. I'm guessing he finally realized that he is a hippo and finally put his body to the test. Within an impressive amount of time of just two years, he managed to just completely bulk up and get more muscle. I don't know how exactly, probably from drinking a shit ton of Sonic G Fuel energy formula. I heard that it does do something for you. I bought this shit because I thought it looked funny, but I, I, I think it was legitimately gonna get a heart attack. So yeah, he goes from a glorified chauffeur to kicking some major ass. Seriously, in-game, he takes out guards within like 2-4 to four hits, contrast to Sly and Bentley needing, well, a lot of hits. By the time of the museum heist that kicks off the sequel, it's mentioned that it was Bentley's first time in the field, but Murray has no troubles or worries of what is going on, which certainly gives you the idea that he's done this before a handful of times now. And then, the best scene for Murray happens, his showdown with Rajan. It encapsulates everything I've been talking about. Sly's down and out, Bentley doesn't have the power needed for this situation, so it's time to find and use that newfound strength and step up. This is it! 
This is the Cooper gang I've heard so much about and feared these long hours? The Murray will renew your fear. Who's the Murray? All I see is a fat, pathetic weakling. I might be big and not as smart as the other guys, but one thing I'm not is weak. <laughs> Fun boss battle. Despite being captured and sent to jail, Murray also shows his mental fortitude for as long as he can. Great work. And throughout the rest of the second game, Murray keeps up his strong composition. Dude had enough power and strength to use a handcart to pursue a freaking train. But what happens when you can no longer keep up with the persona that you made for yourself? Looks like personality number three isn't working out anymore. Murray's final moment before the official defeat of Clockla was picking up his friend's broken, crushed body. That's gonna mentally hit someone one way or another. And by the start of the third game, he was no longer the Murray, nor even on the team anymore. He left by his own accord. This would, for sure, confuse anyone, because it seems a little out of nowhere. Well, once again, thanks to the tie-in comics, we really get to see Murray kind of revert back to who he was from Thievius Raccoonus admittedly just a big clumsy guy, and with just coming off the heels of witnessing his second best friend almost die, Murray couldn't handle it anymore. He thought he could fight those thoughts, but damn, brain got hands. An excellent point from, oh boy, Nop Nap Narp, quite the name in good videos, is that if we the player really wanted to know what it's like to lose Murray, then there should have been a moment where Sly and Bentley get overwhelmed by guards and make a comment that they need Murray for this situation. Guards will enter the room one at a time, and the player has to kill them. The easiest way to do this is to simply knock them into the nearby fire. This is probably asking too much, and probably wouldn't have had the intended effect, but I would have loved to see them flood the room with two to three guards at a time, and have the player kind of get overwhelmed more. This would highlight Murray's absence from the team given his role as the muscle. This is especially true if you played the previous game, where Sly and Murray teamed up often to take out guards. Which, now that I think about it for myself, they definitely could have done something like that, because in the same episode, they legit make a plan to get Carmelita and her team to do the heavy lifting against Octavio's goons. Ah oh well. Fighting is overrated anyway. Time for inner peace and the ball form in Australia. You know, the 30 day free trial version of it. Because it didn't take long for Murray to go back to his violent ways, mostly due to him seeing Bentley in a helpless state like last time, and then he says the rawest line in the whole series. You're right to be a scared hippo. Your wheelchair friend should have been so smart. Murray! Help! That does it! I'll floss my teeth with your spine! The Murray returns! From that point, the Murray had indeed returned, and he was pretty much back to normal. The best part about Sly 3 for Murray was his interactions with the other members of the gang, especially Penelope, albeit there's not too many moments with them, but he acts like an older brother towards her, telling her how the gang usually operates and what they do from time to time. It was cool. Then it climaxes with Dr. M trying to break up the bond of the Cooper gang. But Murray has literally already gone through mental torture from the Contessa, so simple words aren't going to do much to him. Instead, standing back to back with Bentley to defend Sly's life and legacy is more important. Murray displays his righteous and finesse prowess through punching those who seek to harm his family. It's just how he does it. We do what we must, what we do, because he is the doer. I honestly don't know how to finish this video off, D just cut this part of the script out. And that was the video on Murray, or THE MURRAY. I guess one last thing I could bring up is how, behind the scenes wise, it was really hard to pinpoint how they wanted Murray to sound. In Thievius Raccoonus, apparently that lisp that he kind of has, 
kind of carried over from what they originally wanted Murray to be. I've already brought this up in my cut content video for Sly Cooper, so, you know, watch that if you want. That's two slutty plugins in one video. I'm on a roll. Or just watch this video here, where it actually came from. Also an option. Also, if you end up finding some of, like, the, uh, beta, and I think even up to the alpha versions of Sly 2 and Episode 1 especially, you can tell that they also really didn't know how to give Murray that macho and, like, superhero-esque voice and... Ooh, man, it's, it's pretty something. Entertaining, not the right voice, but entertaining. So I'm glad that they fixed that because I know Chris Murphy had to audition, like, I think again, actually, to get the role of Murray because they couldn't just, they couldn't find that voice for him, which was really crazy, which kind of goes to his character. You know, Murray didn't really have much of an identity and, you know, behind the scenes, uh, they couldn't find his voice, also an identity. Okay, so yeah, this is, the, you know, the part of the video where no one watches it because I'm rambling on. But yeah, uh, for the two of you that stayed for this part, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. You know what to do with all the links that I provide and everything of sort. Uh, thank you for watching. That's greatly appreciated, of course. Have a great day, have a great night, and everything else you know what to do.